click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hi friends, in the previous chapter we have discussed about that is how we can prepare that is alcohol by using NGIs and ketones. But in that case we have used that is the reducing agent that is sodium amide. But now in this case we are going to talk about that is how we can prepare that is alcohol using that is quinoa reagent as well as NGIs and ketones. So now let us talk about this topic very clearly. <music> So now in this topic we are going to talk about that is how we can prepare alcohol that is using Grignard reagent. But Grignard reagent are only used widely whenever we have to react it with aldehyde or whenever we have to react it with keto. So for that, now let me give you an idea that is what happens if a Grignard reagent is reacted with an aldehyde or keto so as to get that is alcohol. So now let me give you the general reaction for this one. For example, if we have an aldehyde or keto, and obviously we understand that is it consists of a common that is carbonyl group that is C double bond group. So this could be an aldehyde also, or this could be a ketone also. So suppose if this reacts with that is RMGX, which is also known as Grignard reagent, and this reaction occurs in presence of that is dry ether. So whenever the reaction proceeds, obviously we understand that is the R or the alkyl group is basically partially negative charge it has and this MGX it will have a partially positive charge. So that's the reason that this MGX it will try to attract this oxygen atom over here and why? Because this oxygen atom is the one which has partially negative charge and this carbon atom is the one which has a partially positive charge. That's the reason that this R group will attack on the carbon atom and this MGX will attack on the oxygen atom. Thereby we will get an intermediate or we will get an adduct that is nothing but carbon here I have mentioned here as it is, while this carbon will get attached to this R, while this oxygen it will get attached to this MgX. So this is the adduct that we will get. But this is not the final product we want, we need the alcohol. So that's the reason that the final product will be only obtained whenever we we'll treat this adduct in presence of hydrolysis. Suppose if this undergoes through hydrolysis, and the product that we could obtain here is we could obtain that is C, there will be R, and this will turn into OH, but the rest of the thing it will be that is MGXOH. So, this is how we can obtain an alcohol. But this alcohol can be primary, secondary, or tertiary also, depending on whether we are considering an aldehyde or whether we are considering a keto. Let me allow to give you an example related to this reaction. So, friends, suppose if we have considered an aldehyde that is. CH3, CH double bond. And suppose if we are treating with a Grignard reagent and that Grignard reagent that is CH3, MgX, or I could write it as MgBr. So the reaction proceeds in presence of dry ether as a solvent. So the product that we could obtain as an adduct is nothing but CH3, C, here it will be H as it is, while on the carbon atom, the alkyl group will attach at the this nothing but CH3. While on the oxygen atom, there will be MgBr that will be attached. But obviously, this reaction is not a complete reaction. Obviously, we have to treat it in an acidic condition. So therefore, this is what we are using H3O plus, and this is what the hydrolysis will take place. So after that, we'll obtain the product, and the product that we could obtain that is nothing but CH3 C. This is CH3. So here yeah, this oxygen it will turn into that is OH. And the rest of the byproduct that will be basically MgBrOH. So this is the alcohol that we have obtained and now let me that is putting the valency over here also. So now the product that we have obtained over here is basically a secondary alcohol. So this is nothing but a secondary alcohol that we have obtained from using that is an aldehyde that is acetaldehyde. So for that, suppose if we have used that is formaldehyde, then we would have obtained a primary alcohol. So in this case also, suppose let me give you other information. Suppose if we have used that is C2H5 MgBr, then the product that we could have obtained it will be nothing but again a secondary alcohol. So now let me give you an example when a ketone is reacted with a Grignard reagent. So friends, now suppose if I am considering that is CH3 C double bond O CH3 that is Nothing known as acetone, or we could also call it as propanone. And suppose this propanone is basically reacted with 
I could call it as that is C2H5 and GBF. Obviously, the reaction will proceed in presence of that is dry ether. So, therefore, I am writing here as the dry ether. And let's see what is the product that we could obtain as an adult. But before that, let me clear this that this C2H5 will have a partially negative charge, while this MGBR it will have a partially positive charge, while this carbon it will have a partially positive charge, and this oxygen it will have partially negative charge. So that's the reason that the adduct that we could obtain. So that's the reason that the adduct that we could obtain is nothing but CH3. This one will turn into that is CO MGBR, while this is the valency that is fulfilled by CH3, when the other one that is this C2H5 will get attached on this carbon atom, and that is how obviously we could get C2H5 over here. But this is not the final product, obviously, we understand that this is the product. So, obviously, the reaction will proceed in presence of an acidic condition, and that process is nothing known as hydrolysis. So, after the hydrolysis, the product that we could obtain it is that is CH3, C, CH3, this is C2H5, while this is OH that we could obtain. And the byproduct that we could get is that is MGBROH. So if you observe this product, this is nothing but an alcohol, but this carbon is nothing but tertiary carbon atom, and that's the reason that the overall alcohol is got to be a tertiary alcohol. So this is how we can obtain a tertiary alcohol on secondary or primary by using Lindar reagent that is being reacted with that is aldehyde or ketone. So this was related to the example that I was discussing about and talking about the IUPC nomenclature for this one. It is very simple to understand. That is, we have to set the nomination. So this is the first carbon atom that we could say. One, two, three, four. So therefore, in this straight chain, basically we have four carbon atoms, and four carbon atoms means nothing but butanol. But butanol, in this case, basically it is not a straight chain. Obviously, the, it has a branching also. So therefore, the name that we could give is that is two methyl butane two also. This is the product that we have. So that's it. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope I'll see you next time. Till then don't forget to subscribe to YouTube channel. Thank you so much.